Most people who are building an emergency fund know the guideline of $1,000 and then build your way up to three to six months worth of expenses. Yet, most Americans still can't afford a $1,000 emergency. Which leads me to believe that most people aren't putting enough money in their emergency funds. In fact, only 38% of Americans have emergency funds. 38%? It got me thinking, man, like I have been posting so many emergency fund videos lately and I completely forgot to mention this. Following the three to six month guideline only for saving your emergency fund is wrong. Think about it, there's more than one type of emergency that could happen in anyone's life. You have loss of income emergencies, such as being laid off, being fired, or being injured on the job. Then you have property emergencies. What if your house is on fire? What if there's a flood? What if someone breaks in and breaks multiple items in your house and steals a lot of items in your house as well? There's healthcare emergencies. What if you break a bone? What if you have an underlying health condition? Look, when it rains, it pours. So my point here is emergencies are not convenient and who's to say that more than one emergency won't happen at once and guess what it's usually going to be expensive and there's a few mistakes regarding emergency funds that people are still making that are detrimental to their finances and the problem is they don't even realize they're making these mistakes for one most people don't separate their emergency funds just like sinking funds you'll want to have specific emergency funds set aside with different names and dollar amounts instead of just having them all on one account and if you don't this is what could happen. That's right. It says we had to start over with our emergency fund. It was fully funded. Then all, then all in one week, in one week, in one week we had to replace our transmission, furnace, air conditioner, and water heater. You telling me things don't happen like this? Things like this can happen to anybody at any given time. And also when you don't separate your emergency funds, it's super easy to underestimate how much should actually go into each individual emergency fund. Here's some examples of emergency funds that I think are important for everyone to have. And of course, everyone's emergency funds are gonna be specific to them. So these are specific to me in terms of what I think would be most likely to happen to me. I base these off of what I think is most likely to happen to anyone. And if it can happen to anyone, it can happen to me. Car accident fund, a loss of income fund. And by the way, the loss of income fund is the three to six months that is usually in the guideline. Work injury fund. Let's say you're on the job and you get hurt. It happens to so many people. And next thing you know, your salary is cut until you return back to work, right? You're going to need a fund to replace that portion that you're not getting when you're off of work. Unforeseen travel fund. So this is for legitimately if a family member gets hurt and they're in another state. For example, I live across the country from my family, so I would need an unforeseen travel fund just in case one of my family members gets severely injured or something happens and I have to absolutely go see them. That's what that fund is for. And this is what I call the struggle fund. This is specifically for people who ask for money, who need money immediately. It could be a family member or a close close friend. And the reason I put this last is because you have to help yourself before you can help others. Because if you help somebody else out and you pay them, for example, rent money or something, and then you lose your job and you lose your income, then, then you're just left not being able to help. And they're not going to be able to pay you back right away. So the struggle fund is what should be built last if you do have a struggle fund. And it's so that you can help yourself before you can help others. It's like when you're on the airplane, they say, put the mask on you before you put your mask on anyone else. And again, the key here is just to name the emergency fund so you know exactly why you're saving. And as your life changes, these funds should change as well. Another big mistake is people are not going back and checking what they already have in their emergency fund and what their names are. As your life changes, as you buy houses, as you have kids, as you have pets, your emergency fund needs to continue to grow as you do. Hey. Somebody is disrupting the show today. Say hi to the camera. Say hi. If you keep it the same and another expense comes up and you don't have the funds for it, it's going to end the same way it always does. You borrowing money and ending up in debt or you completely depleting your other accounts and then you have to start all over. But you wanna know something crazy? You can do everything I just said and it still won't be enough. And the biggest reason is because people don't take the time to get specific about their emergency funds. Instead, they'll just assign a name to different emergency funds and they'll throw out an arbitrary number like say 1,000, but in reality, they might need 2,500. For example, I could say, all right, yep, car accident fund, $1,000. But you have to ask yourself, 
the hard questions. Why would it be $1,000? You need to think about it this way. If you're setting up a car accident fund, for example, what damages can I expect? Like what's the worst case scenario that could happen to my car? What damages would I expect to pay for? Is my car gonna be totaled in this accident? Am I gonna be injured in this accident? Cause then you have car damages to pay for, then you have health expenses to pay for. And sure, insurance might take care of some of it or all of it, but you never know. There's always unforeseen expenses somewhere. And the deeper you dig into these questions, the more realistic that number is gonna become. Instead of just throwing out a number, ask yourself, what am I gonna to have to pay for? Am I gonna to need to buy a whole new car? Is it cheaper to get my car fixed? or get a different car altogether. You need to ask yourself these questions. Another example is the unforeseen travel fund. How far away am I gonna to have to travel? Am I getting there through plane? Am I driving? If I am driving, how much is the gas gonna cost? When I get to where I'm getting, am I staying in a hotel? Am I staying with family? Is there a funeral involved? Do I need to get a rental car? These are the questions you need to be asking yourself. Don't just throw a random number out there. Actually think about the dollar amounts to each specific question that you ask that pertains to that emergency fund. And the real goal here is to not go in debt because you guessed too low of a number for your emergency fund. Because honestly, another big mistake is the fact that people use their credit cards as their emergency fund anyways. And now you need to reach into your budget or even your savings just to pay off your debt. Which brings me to my next point. The biggest mistake is not having an emergency fund at all. Some people feel like they can't put away any money per month. And some people just feel like building an emergency fund isn't urgent or important. But with those two excuses, please keep in mind that the average person spends in excess of $438 per month on non-essential items. And for the people who think it's not important or urgent to save, just look at this pandemic going on right now. That is all I have to say about it. No one expected it to happen and then boom, the unemployment rate is at an all time high and people are hurting financially. And how many of those people do you think were prepared for it? Exactly, it's always urgent because you never know when a catastrophe is going to happen. That's it for the video today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. I really just wanted to make this video today because I saw a video from Finance Rocks, which was amazing, and it really inspired me to make this video because I noticed I left out so much information in my other emergency fund video. So I just want to keep adding on and adding value to you guys so that you can get the most out of life and and live the life that you deserve to live under as much of your control as possible. So thanks for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. If you like this video, if you like my content, hit the like button, subscribe to me. I make two videos every single week and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.